Bob Gumsey. So I went to uh, school uh, in the Bronx and Manhattan. I went to junior high school that specialized in art and music. And then from there, I was admitted to a specialized art school uh, for three years. Okay. So what's your what's your skill set? What's your specialty? Art is sort of broad. Uh, my specialty uh, initially, my I planned to be an architect, but I couldn't deal with math. So I chose to study advertising design. And that's what I majored in in high school. And from there, I continue studying um, advertising. So what what's your family background like? And what type of neighborhood did you grow up in? Um, my family was was part of the migration during the 1930s and early 40s, coming from the Caribbean, the South, uh, and uh, other parts of the country, uh, largely to uh, find better housing, better schooling, uh, and this generally occurred in the migration from the 1930s to the 1960s. Now, Bob, you designed the iconic Black is Beautiful posters with the Grand Dassa models in it, uh, yeah. in the photographs taken by Kwame Brathwaite. Can you tell us what inspired you? Can you tell us how that came about? Uh, well, it was um, really inspired by the continued success and the mission of the Grand Dassa models and what AJ has attempted to do. Um, with defining who we as uh, black people in general and black women um, are supposed to be. Uh, and this was primarily influenced um, by our interaction with the African Nationalist Pioneer Movement, who was um, founded on the teachings of the Honorable Marcus Garvey, who emphasized, uh, particularly with, uh, with women, the beauty and the naturalists. Uh, of them. So uh, this is what um, pretty much inspired me um, to project uh, this concept in a graphic term. And I came up with the idea of playing around with type and incorporating uh, the images that um, Kwame um, had uh, used uh, and and photographed uh, uh, for the Grand Asa models. Now, you mentioned AMPM, African Nationalist Pioneer Movement. You, I, I, I know that you had not joined the organization, but you do have some ties to them via your sister. Can you tell us about your relationship to African Nationalist Pioneer Movement? Well, I do not have a... Uh, a formal relationship with the ANPM, aside from uh, interacting um, with them during that particular period. As you stated, I never was an official member, um, but I did attend, um, you know, their events uh, uh, over, you know, over a period of years. So you were, you were a supporter? Yes, I was. Mm. So speaking of supporting, your sister was a member of the Grand Asa Models who supported the African Jazz Art Society and Studio, your sister Jean. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, Jean uh, became a Grand Asa model uh, after the first uh, successful show at the Purple Manor in 1962. I, um, I came back home and I said to her, Jean, this is something that you might want to consider being part of. Uh, and she was a little skeptical at first, but uh, then she decided, well, let me uh, give it a try. And that's how she became a, a member of the Grand Dessa Models. Now, anybody who's seen the picture of your sister Jean knows she was quite a uh, fabulous and beautiful woman. Um, in fact, that beauty that she had impressed Eldridge Cleaver so that he sent that letter to Elambe about, you know, wanting to meet her. Can you tell us a little bit about the letter that uh, Eldridge Cleaver 
of the Black Panther Party sent when he saw Gene. Yes, that was interesting, and was and we all uh, were very surprised that that the receipt of that letter um, to uh, Elambe, uh because first of all, at that time he was in prison, and uh, the shows had become very successful, and we got a lot of media coverage. But um, here again, we never thought that um, we would be getting a letter from Folsom Prison um, <laughs> where he was um, incarcerated. Uh, so it was a complete surprise to us, um, you know, how he was able to, you know, get information about us. Uh, <laughs> we were not clear on that, but we were pretty much taken by what he um what he wrote, and particularly how he singled out uh, my sister Jean as one of the um, uh, beautiful women who were uh, members of eight uh, of the Grand Death Models. <laughs> now, it's funny that we talk about Eldridge Cleaver uh, from prison. Um, you were coming up during a time where people were being drafted, and they were threatening people to, you know, either you get drafted or you go to jail. I know Inambe and Kwame were able to avoid the draft or being sent away. What was your experience with that? My time? experience was not as successful in, in, in doing that. Uh, but at that time, uh, as you mentioned, uh, we had uh, really developed a, uh, a particular point of view on the involvement of this country uh in dealing with uh, political issues particularly um you know around the world and we felt that um here again enough attention was not being paid to the uh the problems here in the united states among um people of african descent so the idea of joining the military was uh something that uh many people um, were not comfortable with, and as a result, um, uh, because the draft was um, imposed, uh, and you had to uh, respond uh, to at least to recognize that you, you know, you were potentially going to be drafted. Uh, so there was pushback, uh, and a number of people, when they were asked to go down and uh, be drafted, refused to uh, do. So the other option that many people uh, chose was to flee the country, and many and many went to to Canada. But um, uh, here again, there was there was a strong feeling about um, being part of the military. Unfortunately, in my personal case. Um, one could say I was not as convincing <laughs> when I went down to the draft board. <laughs> so I found myself um, being drafted into the Army. Now, what is someone who's obviously a creative, talented person like yourself, you have a lot of creative skills, what does someone like you do in the military? What was your role? Uh, I was very fortunate uh, when I was uh, in the military for two years. Uh, oftentimes, uh, when you are assigned uh, to a uh, position, it doesn't uh, always reflect your background, your experience. I was fortunate enough, um, after a basic training, uh, I was assigned to a, a military post in Virginia that was used primarily to train reserve and National Guard units uh, during the summer and early fall. Uh, that particular base needed a photographer. And because I had studied photography in, in college, they saw that as part of my um, background, and they said, well, uh, we need a photographer. So I was fortunate enough to become one of the photographers at the base, and eventually I was the um, photographer for, um, um, for all of the um, operations, including the local newspaper that was published um, uh, down at the post. So you seem to have a lot of history that you're able to recall after being on the planet over 80 years. 
and you've also done work to give the history of the Bronx. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of the Bronx, or rather, some of the projects you've worked on, some of the books, and some of the things that you've been involved in? Well, I was always interested in history, particularly local history, because I felt that particularly where uh, I lived was not uh, accurately depicted in the media, uh, because uh, knowing a little about the South Bronx, and particularly Marisenia, where I grew up, uh, I became aware that it was a cultural center that oftentimes was not uh, covered or or uh, even recognized, uh, particularly in in New York media. So through uh, through the Jazz Art Society, uh, which was um, the uh, predecessor to uh, the African Jazz Art Society, being involved in promoting uh, culture through the music of jazz, I learned that the, the Bronx played a, a role in the development uh, of the music. And it was through my, uh, you know, uh, experience with uh the Jazz Art Society and promoting um, jazz concerts, I realized that there was this rich history. So uh, that led me to become uh, more involved in other areas. Uh, I eventually had the opportunity to um, be uh, someone who recognized the importance of honoring those who lived in the Bronx and made a contribution. So, uh, which led me to uh, become part of a, um, a a group of people who were concerned about recognizing the historical contribution of people of African descent. And I became involved with uh, Fordham University, who started a Bronx African American history project um, about documenting the uh, that unknown history. And from there, I got more involved in the community that I grew up in, and I uh, eventually uh, spearheaded a number of street co-namings uh, to honor uh, selected and ind notable individuals who lived in the Bronx and made a contribution, you know, uh, to the city. Wow. Well, Bob, I want to thank you today for taking your time out to share some history of the African Jazz Art Society and Studio and some of the history about yourself and letting our future um, jazz buffs, culture buffs, history buffs learn a little bit more about you. Well, I certainly uh, thank you for the opportunity of, uh, of sharing my story.